Well, good morning, everybody. We are starting one minute early, so don't ever blame Baptists for being late. So we're breaking that trend right now. Uh, I want to welcome you to the service this morning. My name is Zach. I'm the senior pastor here, and uh, we're so happy and excited to have Lloyd and Athena peace with us this morning. Uh, we get to hear uh, them uh, minister, hear him minister the word to us later. And so uh, you'll be introduced to them later on in the service. If you're a guest with us this morning, or maybe even been coming for a while, uh, but you've never uh, been never contacted or been able to connect with us yet, and you would like to do so, there's a guest card in the seat back in front of you. We'd love to have you just take that, fill it out. Hopefully there's a pin around there as well. And you can just turn it in. There's a drop box uh, just outside the office, out in the foyer, and then a, a small box as you go through the double doors on your way out. You can just drop it in there, and we can be in touch with you. And you can indicate on there how, how you'd like to be contacted or any questions uh, you may have. So uh, just, yeah, a couple, just, you know, s- some things we've been announcing a lot and been in the emails. So I trust this has been communicated well to all of you. But uh, just to keep in front of us, camp registration is going on. So uh, we won't spend too much more time on that. Just any questions, ask Brian or Sarah uh, uh, Zillman about that. Easter is next week, and so just take notes. Uh, take note of that again. And I know the last uh, last year, I think we had to cancel the uh, uh, sunrise uh, service. Uh, you can go back to the Easter one. Just yeah, we had to cancel the sunrise service because it was so cold. So again, Easter sunrise service is weather permitting, but we'll give you plenty of heads up on that. We won't we won't make the decision at six fifteen or anything like that. But just do take do take no. I mean, breakfast is on, uh, Easter service is on, and, and so you have those times there. Uh, be sure to yeah. Uh, Sign up. Sign up for sure today. I mean, because next week is the week. So be sure to sign up online or out in the door uh, if you plan on to attend breakfast and if or what you plan to bring. And that'd be a great help to us as as uh, as well. There will be a Easter egg hunt for the children. Uh, I, th- I think sixth grade and under. Uh, so that's next week after the service. Uh, we'll have somebody just uh, about 10 minutes after the service, kids, you can meet uh, with a parent. We do want th- them to be supervised, so please have a parent or somebody responsible with your child before you send them out there. And we'll have our annual Easter egg hunt after the Easter service next week as well. And so then, yes, uh, we, have a, we have a members meeting on April uh, 21st. And following that members meeting, we would like to have a, we're going to have a soup supper. And so the members meeting is for members, but... The soup supper is for anybody and everybody who can hear my voice. So we're gonna we're gonna the members meeting will happen at four o'clock and April twenty first at five thirty p.m. We'll head over that way for the soup supper. So again, we'll have a members meeting for members, but the soup supper, supper is open for everybody. So we invite everybody to uh, again another sign up sheet out there that you can that you can uh, sign up for that. A couple other things I want to mention uh, for those of you who, who uh, uh, you may have seen it advertised, but the visitation for uh, Rob Moore uh, will be uh, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday from 3 to 7 at Clover Creek Event Center in Minneapolis, and then his funeral will be this week, uh, uh, Thursday of this week at 5 p.m. at Clover Creek Event Center as well, and, and many of the families here this morning, so be sure to to uh, share your love for them and encourage them today. And then one final announcement. It is, uh, um, uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the name of today? Triumphant Palm Sunday, that's it. Because that really leads to my next thing. After the service, kids, uh, we have palm branches for you. See, I, speak, I don't even speak Portuguese, Lloyd, and I can't even figure out English words either. So, so we're going to have palm branches for you to grab. So find Andrew Wagler after the service, and we're going to pass out palm branches. If you don't know who Andrew Wagler is, just look for a guy holding a bunch of palm branches, and that will be where you go. So, uh, so that'll, I think that's all we need to announce this morning. So let's pray, and we'll continue our service. <clears throat> God, uh, all glory, lot, and honor be to you this morning. Uh, we are, we are, we are people of of of, uh, of unworthiness when it comes to your grace. But then, Lord, we're just so thankful that you look upon us in your grace and in your mercy, and you bring us in. And just like in the story of the prodigal son, anyone who who decides to to leave the the pig swamp and 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 just uh, swimming with the pigs and all the muck muck. Uh, you you run to them, you receive them, and Lord, so often we have things rehearsed in our mind, and we have we have certain things we think we need to do in order to earn your pleasure, earn your acceptance, 
But God, it's, it's just simply through your son Jesus that we have acceptance, and that's all that matters. And so, God, just thank you for accepting us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you that it is not based on our works, because if it were based on our works, uh, we'd be lost forever. So, God, this morning we want to exalt you and glorify you. And so may that be done through our singing, through, our, uh, through the preaching of the word. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All glory, laud, and honor.
God of the ages. This morning for our scripture reading, we're going to uh, read from Luke 20 and the triumphal entry, which is what was causing me to slip up earlier. Uh, but the triumphal entry, and we look forward next week to maybe greater than the triumphal entry was his triumphal exit. And so, uh, exit from the tomb, that is. So Luke chapter 20, and begin reading in verse 28. Luke chapter 20. And beginning in verse 
28. When he had said these things, he just got done speaking a number of parables. When he said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And when he, knew, when he drew near Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away, uh, so those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his, of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And we drew near, and he saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. But the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Let's pray. God, this morning we, get, we want to get a, a full picture of Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry. Lord, in reality, Luke tells us it was a sorrowful entry. The people rejoiced, gladness on their faces, and yes, even in their hearts. Yet as you were among that crowd and the people were rejoicing, as you came and you saw the city, your city, in the Old Testament, known as your bride, as the holy mountain of God, as you looked upon your city, you didn't join in with the celebrating. Instead, your, the Lord Jesus, your heart was sorrowful because you realized that amongst all the celebrating, there was, there was a sickness. And so, Lord, we praise you and we magnify you as the Jesus who saves us, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And yet, Lord, we're thankful that you didn't get caught up in all that and decide just to, just to be king right then and there, but that sorrow that you had for, for the people in that town is the same reason you entered that town because you knew once you entered that town, you were going to be handed over to the chief priests. They were going to accuse you falsely, condemn you, and then hand you over to be crucified. And yet, Lord, it says in Hebrew that for the joy that was set before you, the joy that was set before you, not the joy of the crowd, not the joy of the scene, but the joy that was set before you, you endured that cross. And the joy that was set before you is that you would obtain a prized possession through your own blood. And Lord, we read that you purchased this church, you purchased the church, you purchased believers, with not with gold or silver or anything else, with, but with your precious blood. Jesus, you were on a mission full of sorrow, a man of sorrows. Even while everybody else was rejoicing, you were a man of sorrows. Lord, as uh, people were rejoicing at your crucifixion, you were a man of sorrows. And uh, thank you, Lord, for enduring the cross so that we might have everlasting life and peace with God. And so uh, we, just, uh, we just praise you. What else can we say but thank you, Lord? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen to that. And he is our living hope. Let's stand, please, as we sing about our Lord and Savior.
such boundless grace. The God of angels stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of
Let's pray, and Lloyd will come up and bring the word for us. God, now as we come to your word, I uh, just thank you uh, for the guidance and the help that you give to us through your word. And Lord, just pray that you would be with Lloyd now as he, as he opens it up. Just pray that you'd give him a clear mind and um, a clear thoughts and just help as he preaches. But even more so than the one who presents it, and Lord, us who are listening to your word, help me, Lord, to be ready to listen. Help me to be uh, open to conviction. Help me, God, to grow to be more like Jesus as a result of the words that I hear from your holy scriptures, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bom, irmãos, vamos dar continuidade ao nosso tempo junto hoje. Bem que tem brasileiros no meio da turma hoje, que pelo menos entende o que eu estou falando aqui, menos a minha esposa, né? Sorry, that was only for this group right here. I just found out they're Brazilian. Woo! All right, let me get back. Let me focus here. Back on our display table, there's some prayer cards if you guys would like to have a prayer card and remember us in prayer. That would be great. Grab one back there. There's also a place for you to sign up for our uh, updates when they go out, if you would like that as well. Well, we, we do work in the upper Amazon region of Brazil. So for those of you who were not here and uh, for the first hour, um, I grew up in Brazil. My parents were missionaries down there for about 29 years, then they retired in 05, and we went back in 06. But being raised in the upper Amazon region of Brazil, we started catching fish right away. So I got a fish story that I would like to tell my people here today. And as we, 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 uh, we lived right on, right on the riverfront there, and um,
That is a real hook, by the way. It's not a, uh, a sogi. What's that in English? Yes, it's not a butcher hook. Okay. So for those, for those now, yeah. So this is the only time you're going to get to see this. I don't let it sit out because some kids grab it, and that's the last thing I want to do is someone going to the ER with this thing. <laughs> but our Brazilians, they use this to fish for fish. Okay. So for those of you who are fishermen, what type of bobber are we going to use on this one? <laughs> no, seriously. A, a buoy. What do you mean by buoy? Oh, okay, okay. Think bigger. Think bigger. So when you're, when you're coming down the Amazon River, because the only way to get to where we're at is either you boat in or fly into our town. And when I say fly in, I mean in a private airplane. Okay, so when you, when you leave, when you leave, wherever you leave here in the U.S. to get to our place, it's, you're on the third day by the time you get to us, and it's by boat. Either you're going downriver or you're going upriver. And as you're cruising down the Amazon, you look out and you see a 55-gallon drum floating out in the middle of the river. It's not a 55-gallon drum that got away. It's the bobber. Now, what size of fish are we going to catch you with this guy, right? A big one. Where, where's, where's, who, who said that? Come on. Come on. I'm, I'm, used, I'm used to working with teens. Okay. You're right. It's a big one. It's a big one. Now, the story that I'm going to tell, I was about six. Any six-year-olds here today? Five? Seven? Come on, there's, there's got to be several of you. Okay, okay, yep. So, we started catching piranhas. And uh, Lloyd got this bright idea in his head that he wanted to play with this thing. So he filled mom's sink with water, and after he caught it, he threw it down in the sink. Things swimming around in there and whatnot. And my dad said, now Lloyd, look at the teeth that God gave those things. Okay? And this will be on the display table so you guys can see. Um, don't, don't be messing with it. And as a six-year-old, we always obey our parents, right? Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> Here, let's translate it into something that we all can sympathize with. As adults, do we always do what God tells us to? Ooh, Lloyd, now you're already meddling. So, back to the story. I said, okay, Dad said not to be messing with this, but if I put something on my hand, I think I can reach down into the sink and grab it. So, what would I put on my hand to protect myself from this guy? I hear some, some, some anybody ever watch River Monsters? And nobody here? Oh, okay, one, two. Oh, now, now yeah, now, that, now they're coming out of the woodwork. Okay, that guy's absolutely crazy. <laughs> so I would think one of those mesh gloves made out of metal. But remember, I was six. Six-year-old brain was thinking, plastic bag should work just fine. <laughs> I'm glad my pain brings laughter to you. So I put the bag on, and I reached down in, and lo and behold, I was not able to grab a hold of him before he grabbed a hold of me. And I lost the tip of my, my finger. You can still see the the scar there and the fish that did it to me was this size you, you thought I was playing with this <laughs> come on even as a six year old I knew not to play with that right but as, as we continue this morning turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 52 we're going to be looking at Isaiah 52 is our launch point. To what I would like to do this morning, and it's and it's neat, the songs that we're singing, especially that 
that first one and praise the Lord for the choir and all the instrumentalists. I, I don't have that ability. I can't sing. I can't play anything except my tunes on my radio. But as you're turning there to Isaiah chapter 52, let's open with a word of prayer and get started this morning. Father, we pray that as we open your word this morning that you will speak to us through your Holy Spirit. And if there's anything that impedes us from being a vessel that you can use, we pray that we would change what needs to be changed in our own lives. We pray for conviction this morning that we can understand what you're speaking to us and then be able to go out and put it into practice in our daily walk with you in your son's name we pray amen so we're here in Isaiah 52 but we want to talk about beautiful feet this morning so if we asked you to take your shoes off relax I'm not going to and I'm not going to take mine off and we looked at your feet, what would they look like? Would they be feet and toes that magazines would be knocking on your door saying, we want to take photographs of those things? Or would they be toes that you would look at and go, what in the world happened to you? So bear with me today because down in the Amazonas, I don't hardly ever use closed toed, and I'm gonna get that word mixed up today, closed toed shoes, except when I'm up front at church preaching or I'm playing pickleball. All the other times I'm in flip flops. Okay, so when you look at my toes and most of all the other Brazilians, they're gonna be in flip flops of some sort and they, you know, you can have the pedicures and they do pedicures, man, they can do some pretty sweet looking ones with all these little, you know, hand done little doohickey thingies on the, on the thing there to make the toes really nice. But the majority of us, our feet, you know, taking us to work, from work, in our case down in Amazonas, we kick a lot of balls play because we play soccer, so that, you know, smashes our toes and they kind of look gnarly. What do your feet look like? Now let's put that into context biblically as we try to answer this question today. So as we get started, before we read our, our starting passage here, and then we're gonna be jumping around, so bear with me. In Isaiah 52, before we get there, we gotta put into context of what has been going on in the Jewish history. The Jews had a lengthy exile in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar had you know, come and, and uh, laid siege on the Jewish nation for several years there, several different, uh, you know, taking away of, of, the, of the Jewish people there. Many had been killed. People were having a crisis of faith, and they started to think maybe Yahweh or God had abandoned them. Were the Babylonian gods stronger than their God, Yahweh? Sort of sounds like, 2024 to Lloyd. When we start enfrentando, you're going to bear with me because I got Brazilians in the house today. Facing, when we're facing problems that start to get us down, we start, a, we start to look at the problem bigger than what we were singing about this morning. Right? I mean, let's be honest. But the one song that we sang this morning, the story, the story's already been written. It's already, I mean, we're, we're just, we're, we're living the interlude, so to speak. It's, we already know what's going to happen at the end. But we got to get to that end. And it's in getting to that end that we can have beautiful feet. Let's continue, though. God had not abandoned them. He had a plan for them and was going to redeem them. And we see this redemption sort of taking place here in chapter 45, before we get to 52 here. Cyrus of Persia, 
defeated the Babylonians. Cyrus reversed the cruel oppression to the Babylonians and allowed the people to start to return to Judah to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple that had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. So life is hard. Try to put yourself into context here. And sometimes it's difficult as we look through Old Testament history to try to put that into our brain for 2022 because it's not our reality. But it was their reality and we have it here before us. So it's th this is people that went through this. So life is hard. There seems to be no end to the suffering. You're living out some of the darkest days. Your cities are in ruin. Verse 7, chapter 52, verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes, publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice with the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Bring forth into joy, sing together ye wastelands of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. Did you get that? He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. So put yourself into context here. Everything's been going bad. And all of a sudden, you see someone on the horizon running. Now for us to get out information Today, how do we how do we do that? Right here, right? And within seconds, anyone that has internet can know what's going on with you. But see, that wasn't the case back then. They had to have a runner. So all of a sudden you see the guy on the horizon running and you're like, what in the world? What type of message is he going to be bringing? And he gets there and he says, we're free. We can go back home. If that were you, how would you react to that information? Oh, that's good, man. Thanks. Thanks for letting us know that we're free. I'm being facetious with you this morning. If I could, I would do a backflip for you. Because that's probably what some of them probably did and said, the Lord is redeeming us. He's restoring us. A question here that we have to ask, though, was this just for the Jewish nation? If you look there at the end of verse 10, the Lord sort of projects what's going to happen in the New Testament. It says, the Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And here it is, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. He was already pointing to the future when Jesus would die on the cross. And salvation is for anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. Ponto final, we can go home. No, there's a little bit more I want to get across to us today. So we fast forward to the New Testament now. Fast forward to the New Testament. We see under the, under the Roman rule, we see John the Baptist. If you want to turn to Matthew chapter 3, we see John the Baptist. And as I, I, I try to put into context here, thinking and, and watching how John did ministry. And the way that the Bible paints John, if, you, if, if he were to walk in this morning to the service and sit down, how many of us would probably go, 
whoa, here. I mean, if we're just being honest. I'll be honest with you. There's a context that I need to confess. We have a guy in South Antonio. His nickname is Guy Volta, which is Seagull. We have nicknames everywhere in Brazil. I have no idea what his real name is, but what I do know is he's the city drunk. And I can probably count on both of my hands how many times I've seen that man sober since we've been there. And I see him. And I know God loves him just as much as he loves this piece of trash here. I'm just being real with you, okay? John the Baptist was a weird kind of guy. Ate kind of some weird things. Have you ever tried grasshoppers? Maybe there's some, the, uh, I hear that there's actually chocolate covered grasshoppers. I've not tried them. I got some of my own weird things that people think's weird that I eat. But John, it's interesting that John, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at his feet and try to see what his feet must have looked like with the way that he dressed, I'm thinking maybe even barefoot. I don't know. The scripture doesn't tell us whether it was some sort of flip-flop type thingamajig that he wore or if he was walking barefoot. But he was being used by God because he says, he says there in Matthew chapter 3, he says, John prophesied of Christ's coming. It says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And it's interesting, as we sang this morning about them putting the palm branches down on Sunday, how fast they turned their back on Jesus. But if we put that into context into our own lives, how many times don't we do things that shows the world that we turned our back on God. John goes on to say, though, in John chapter 1, verse 29, he pointed as Jesus was walking, he says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. See, John had beautiful feet because of the message that he was preaching, not because of what his feet looked like physically. Jesus himself even said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he he came to proclaim the good news. He came to proclaim the good news. Years later in Romans, Paul puts it this way. And turn with me there. We're going to be we're going to be camped out there for a little bit. Romans chapter ten. Romans chapter ten, verse fifteen. Paul puts it this way: How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. See, Paul was referring back to what we already read here in Isaiah chapter 52. And it's interesting that if we go back to verse 9 here in Romans, Paul puts the next five or six verses here in a in a in a question and answer sort of sort of set up. Verse nine it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. Folks, that's the end of the story. We're done. We can go home. That's what happens. Anybody 
that clamaz, calls upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, will be what? Saved. This isn't a Lloyd thing. This isn't a you thing. This isn't a, a, a God thing, and therefore we have to do it the way that God prescribed it to us. While the world might like us to believe that all roads lead to heaven, the Bible is very anti that message. It's only through Jesus Christ. I know I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir this morning, but maybe there's something this morning that will touch your soul. Because I need this message so that I can continue the work that God has given to me in Amazonas. Because, folks, there's days that I want to quit. I'm just being honest with you. But we can't do that because we're talking about the eternal souls of people. Your sphere of influence. We started talking about that this morning. Your sphere of influence, I'm going to get off subject if I go to that yet. Hang on, it's right here. Let's continue reading, though. Verse 12, Paul answers it this way. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. He goes back to verse 10 there in Isaiah chapter 52, and he says it's for anyone. The salvation thing is for anyone. So my question for us this morning is this. How are we going to present the gospel to people that God has put into our sphere of influence so that they can see that they actually need what Jesus has done for them on the cross? Or does this get in the way when it comes to telling other people about the Lord. And by this, I mean our life choices and our lifestyle. The video, for those of you who were here this morning, of us there in that community of Gaivota, the patriarch, the first time I went to that community, there's only about 25 people there. He goes, Lloyd, do you want some coffee? All right, show of hands, where's my coffee drinkers? Okay. So I said, uh, nah, where's the water that he's used in, in this coffee from? <laughs> he goes, don't ask, Lloyd. Because nah and I, we always carry our own water with us because we don't know what type of water situation we're going to run into. And I said, no, thanks, I, I'm, I'm good, even though I am a coffee drinker. And he turns to Nan, he's only this far from me, and he goes, hey, Nan, why doesn't Lloyd want any of our coffee, man? So I get home and I tell that story to Athena. And I said, hun, why is this guy going to ever want to listen to me if I won't sit at his table and eat what he has? He's never going to listen to me. Now, why don't I want to drink his coffee is the better question. Does it taste bad? No, it tastes awesome, actually. But see, God has allowed, because of the fall of mankind, this little contraption that's smaller than this called amoeba and giardia to cruise around in water. And what will it do to the human body? It will just give you the runs. But we have a cure for that. It's called secnetazole. The problem with secnetazole is it makes your mouth bitter for about 40 hours. As a kid, I used to drink water right out of the river. You ask my mom, I was sick all the time. I would go down six feet in the river to get the clean stuff. <laughs> but as an adult, I don't like taking secnetazole. <clears throat> so when we went back to the community, he goes, you want some coffee? I go, fill it up. Meanwhile, I'm praying, oh God, 
kill everything that's in here. And I take it. <laughs> and when I need to, when I get home, I have sex needs as well. Why do I tell you that? Because the last thing that I want to be is a hindrance to someone that would give their lives to the Lord, but because of based on something that I'm doing, they might take a step or two back and go, yeah, that's not for me right now. So Paul continues here, though. He asks some questions, and we would like to look at that this morning. So this is great news. Anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord, that's great news. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says it this way. And being that next Sunday is Easter Sunday. So the good news that we are taking to the upper Amazon region of Brazil, and I know it's the same good news that you guys are taking to the communities around Mount Pleasant, is what Paul talks about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, According to the scriptures, this was something that was pre-said. Is that even an English thing? Is it some translating from Portuguese thing? It was pre-said in the Old Testament. He'd already said that this was going to happen. But the Jewish nation, they weren't, you know, when Jesus came on the scene, they were like, yeah, like who's this guy? And he goes on to put it this way. Go back, to, go back to Romans, though. So how are we going to get people to believe that Jesus is the only way? It says, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 14, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Well, that's kind of, that's kind of a rhetorical question, right? Well, they got to know who he is. So therefore, that's our responsibility to take the word of God to people who don't know who Jesus really is. Besides the fact, oh yeah, he was some guy that lived, you know, thousands of years ago. He continues, though, and he puts it this way. How then shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Well, we've got to go out and talk to him about him. And how shall they hear without a What? Okay, my version says preach. I don't know if other versions, let's, let's, let's mess with that word some today because some of you might say, oh, I'm not a preacher. That has nothing to do with me, Lord. Thank you for letting me off the hook. No, I'm not going to let you off the hook because I got a big one. <laughs> let's take that P and R off of that word preacher and let's put in T. And if we do that, now the word says, all of you are included in that word. And how shall they hear without a preacher, teacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And then Paul puts it this way, as it is written, back in Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So folks, if you and I are taking the word of God to the people that God has put in our sphere of influence, God says you and I have beautiful feet, regardless of what they look like physically. Not based on this, but based on this, the message. Is everyone in Mount Pleasant a follower of Jesus Christ? I don't live. I don't live here. So you guys gotta. You guys gotta tell. Are they? So your job's not done right here. You don't. You don't have to go down to the Upper Amazon region of Brazil, and you know, drink water with amoeba and giardia in it, to get to a point that you can present the word of God to people. But you do have to go to someone who doesn't know who Jesus is. 
and get through all of that clutter that's preventing them from seeing who Jesus really is, that he is the only way, that he did die for them just like he died for you and for me and how that they can put their personal trust on him alone. So where are we at today? See, I'm convinced that God's not so concerned about what our feet look like physically, even though we dress them up. We do. But he is worried about where these feet take the body, which takes the message, which is part of what we as a church are supposed to be doing in the world that we live in. Now, I don't want you to walk away this morning and say, Lord, you're, you're kind of giving us a guilt trip that's the last thing I'm doing that's the last thing I'm doing folks the problem is this Satan doesn't want anybody to vacate his team to come over to God's side he doesn't and when people accept Christ as their savior he's torqued at that fact He's like, you're jumping ship? Well, what's up with this? And when that happens, I'm convinced that Satan kind of puts a lot of pressure on that person that's chosen to do that. And they start to think, man, a lot of this thing called the Christian life is harder than almost when I was before I was a Christian. And that might be the case. The Bible says in verse 9 there in chapter 10, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart, in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will go to heaven when we die. How many people are we going to see in heaven? This is evaluation time for me. How many people? going to be in heaven because of what God has allowed me to do and I follow that up with a question of I, don't, don't take this out of context how many people are in hell today that I had the chance to witness to but I didn't 12 year old kid that grew up with me never made a profession of faith to my knowledge. Now I I know that it's because of his choice of not believing in God that put him in hell. But folks, I was a lousy testimony to him as a kid. And that's the last thing I want to do from now on out. See, I can't change the past, but man, can I change from today forward? And you might be sitting here saying, but Boyd, I, I can't do this. I'm here to say that, yes, you are capable of doing that. Because you can sit down at a table and say, you want a cup of coffee? What's going on? Because I guarantee you, the biggest part of ministry doesn't take place in a congregation like we're doing this morning. Okay, there's nothing wrong with what we're doing this morning. It's going to be one on one. That that's where the thing that's where the rubber is going to meet the road. How beautiful are your feet because of the gospel that you're taking to those that God has put in your sphere of influence. Father, we close this morning and we thank you for being able to celebrate today Palm Sunday and we know what your son was coming into Jerusalem there and everyone was 
singing and praising and but then we know that he had to endure all that so that he could redeem us imaginable torture because of the love that he had for us. We pray that as we face this new week, maybe there's someone in our lives that needs to know that Jesus loves them. Give us the boldness to reach out to them and tell them about your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Please stand, if you would, and let's sing together His Robes for Mine. His robes for mine, oh wonderful exchange. For in my sin, Christ suffered in God's grace. Righteousness, I'm justified. In Christ I live, for in my place he died. I cling to Christ and marvel at the cost. Jesus forsaken, God is strange from God. But by such love. Thank you, Lloyd. And that is that is the gospel. His robes for yours, his beauty for your ashes, his riches for your trash, his righteousness for your sin. And that's uh, that's the hope we have. If you've never placed your faith in Jesus and you know you don't have the robes that Jesus offers, his perfect righteousness, I'd love to talk to you. Lloyd will be around as well, or you could talk to with someone else. Um, so our, our Easter week uh, begins this week, and it starts with a service at the end of the week on Friday. 
uh, our Good Friday service. Uh, meet back here uh, for that, and then, of course, Easter weekend. Kids, don't forget to uh, go get your, your palm branches, and then be sure to encourage Lloyd and Athena uh, before you leave. So have a great afternoon. We'll see you back.